Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray for everyone that is watching me right now. Oh God of my salvation, I present everyone that is here. I present them before your court of heaven, oh God. I plead, oh God, and we come under the umbrella of the blood of Jesus Christ. I plead that your court be seated this day, oh God, and let the book of the destinies of this ones be open, oh God, and attend to their cases in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, Lord God, you are the only one that showeth mercy. Let your mercy be found in today's service, in today's prayers oh god let everyone that is watching me right now oh god may they find mercy may they find grace through the precious blood of jesus christ in the mighty name of jesus christ as the holy spirit have empowered us oh god to present ourselves before your court this day father show mercy in the mighty name of jesus christ of Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, Austin. God bless you. Good morning to you, Miss Love. God bless everyone for joining in. We celebrate the Lord. I greet you from my end. Good evening from my end. Uh, we are still in Sunday here. Uh, I know some of you are already in Monday. We are still on Sunday here. God bless you for joining in, and I greet you according to your time. God bless you. Please, as you are joining in, don't forget to share the program. God bless you for doing that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. With that being said, without wasting time, let's lift up our voice and begin to celebrate God and give God all the glory. Let's give God all the praise, for our God is worthy of praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, if you know that you are alive, please let's lift up our voice and begin to celebrate God Almighty in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You can call God by his name according to your own understanding and according to your own voice, according to your own language. You can call God by his name according to scriptures. You can call God by his name in the mighty name of Jesus. As you are doing that, I see God lifting you up. We first of all give God praise before asking God anything. Let's give God praise. Let's celebrate God. Let's give him all adoration. God, you are El Shaddai. Our God is El Shaddai. Our God is El Shaddai. He is Lord Almighty. I don't know what you call your God, but I call my God Elion, the Most High God. Our God is Adonai, the Lord, our Master. Our God is Yahweh, Lord, our Jehovah. Our God is Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner the lord almighty is jehovah rapha god the lord god that heals i call god jehovah Ra, the lord our shepherd i call god jehovah shikano the lord god almighty the lord our righteousness i call god jehovah shama the lord is here i don't know what you are calling your god this morning but lift up your voice and begin to call god by his name address god according to his title your majesty oh God, begin to call God according to your own language. I don't know how you call God in your own language. I don't know how you address God with scriptures, but all I know, I know that you understand what I am talking about. And lift up your voice and begin to celebrate God and give God all the glory. Our God is the everlasting God. Our God is Elion. His name is God, Elion. His name is Kwana. Our God is so jealous of us. Our God is Jehovah Jireh our great provider our god will provide and he will supply all our need according to his riches in glory jehovah shama god our peace higher jehovah Suama, the lord of hosts is someone celebrating god with me is someone giving god all the glory god you are my banner our ebenezer god our helper is someone celebrating god is someone giving god all the glory lord i give you praise i give you all the glory the lord who sanctify i give you praise the lord our healer i give you praise the lord our banner i give you praise lord our shepherd i give you praise the lord that 
my heels, I give you praise. The Lord God Almighty that is present, I give you praise. The Lord of peace, I give you praise. The Lord of hosts, I give you praise. The Lord our champion, I give you praise. The Lord Almighty Jehovah El Shaddai, I give you praise. The Most High God, you are the Most High God, Jehovah. I give you praise. Is someone celebrating God? Is someone magnifying God with me? Is someone exalting the name of Jesus Christ for what he has done? For the Bible said, according to the book of Psalm 150 from 1 to 6, the Bible said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord in his sanctuary. You are in the sanctuary. You are in the sanctuary in the presence of God. Praise the Lord. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Praise him. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise him. Praise him for his unequal greatness. Praise the Lord Almighty with a blast of sound. Praise the Lord with lyrics and harps. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord with tambourine. Praise the Lord with dancing. Praise the Lord with singing. Praise the Lord with strength and flute. Praise the Lord with clash of cybers. Praise him with a loud clenching cybers. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Are you alive? If you know that you are alive, praise the Lord Almighty. If you know that you are not in the mortuary, praise the Lord Almighty. For I myself, as for me and my house, we will praise the Lord. And we serve the Lord with gladness. I don't know what you are going through, but serve the Lord with gladness. Praise the Lord this morning with gladness from the depth of your heart. Begin to pour out your heart to God and tell God what he has done for you, that it is marvelous in your eyes. There are people in the mortuary. There are people that are praying to get to where you are today. If you know that you are grateful for where you are, if you know that you are grateful for what God has done, begin to celebrate God. I will serve the Lord with gladness. As for me, I will celebrate the Lord with gladness. I will come into the presence of God with singing and praises. I will make a joyful noise to the Lord. I, 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 I. I will praise the Lord every day. I will extol his mighty name forever and ever. For great is the Lord and most worthy of our praise. His greatness no one can fathom. What generation commend his great work? I don't know if you are commending the great work of God. I, uh, I will tell of his mighty acts. Uh, yeah. This is the hour where the true worshippers will worship God in truth and in spirit. If you know that you are not faking yourself in here, if you know you are not faking yourself in, in the presence of God, now begin to celebrate God from the depth of your heart. Open up your mouth and begin to at poor praises unto the name almighty unto the god of our salvation with praises with thanksgiving begin to celebrate god and we sing praises to the lord for our lord is good his love towards us endure forever his love towards you endure forever i will celebrate my lord my god i will sing praises to him if you know that you are singing begin to sing praises to the lord almighty always give thanks for where you are for the bible said let everything that has bread praise the lord i will praise the lord among sinners wherever sinners are i will praise the lord wherever sinners are wherever the gentiles are i will praise the lord i will sing to your holy name oh god for you have done great things for us i give you all the glory and i give you all the praise i just then begin to wash yourself with the blood that i plead the blood of jesus christ over myself i plead the blood of jesus christ over my family i plead the blood of jesus christ over myself over the work of my hands that god has called me into i plead the blood of jesus christ over myself begin to make use of the blood begin to make use of the blood of jesus christ begin to make use of the blood of jesus christ begin to make use of the blood of jesus christ i am washed by the blood of jesus christ begin to declare the blood of jesus christ upon your weak what do you want the blood of jesus because the bible says that the blood of jesus speak better than the blood of evil begin to appropriate the blood of jesus christ begin to speak the blood of jesus into your weak or the blood the blood of jesus speak for me in this era of my life the blood of jesus speak for me in this era of my life oh lord as i start have my week, oh Lord. Let the blood of Jesus speak for me. Let the blood of Jesus speak for me in the dark. Let the blood of Jesus speak for me physically. And someone pleaded the blood of Jesus Christ. I just I begin to cancel every negative imagination, every negative thought. Bring them to the obedience of Christ. That every evil imagination that has 
imaginated because that is the work of Satan. Satan brings evil imagination to trap people. And as they begin to pull them, every stronghold of evil imagination, whatever evil imagination you have imagined against yourself before today, that evil imagination, being afraid for nothing, being afraid some evil thoughts just came into your mind. But the Bible said as a man thinketh, so is he. So whatever thing you think is bound to happen this week. And if you think bad things, they are bound to happen. So at this time, that stronghold, that stronghold of that evil thought begin to bring them and begin to declare that all you stronghold of that evil thought, I bring you to the obedience of Christ. I bring you to the obedience of Christ. You will never manifest against me. That evil thought of fear, that evil thought of doubt, that evil thought that want to trap my testimonies this week. I bring you to the obedience of Christ. You will never manifest against me. Any evil thoughts that Satan have introduced into your heart just to put you in bondage this week. I bring them. I come in the name of Jesus Christ. I bring that evil imagination to the obedience of Christ. They will not manifest what the Bible said that we see, that we see the word and come to pass when the Lord Almighty have not commanded it. Any evil imagination that Satan have implanted into your mind for you to conceive in order for you to bet that evil imagination this week. Bring that evil imagination to the obedience of Christ. It will never happen in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It will never come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. Now you are going to declare again that every evil projection, every evil projection projected into the weak, every evil projection projected into the heavens against me this week, I, I invoke the blood of Jesus Christ against you. You will never manifest. Every evil projection, please hear the prayer point very well, that every evil projection projected into the heaven is this week to walk against me. I pull you down. You will never manifest against me. Every evil projection from my father's house, every evil projection from my mother's side, every evil projection from my in-law's side projected into the week to walk against me. I invoke the blood of Jesus Christ against you. I pull you down. You will not manifest against me. You will not manifest this week in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Is someone praying that prayer? Is someone praying that prayer? That every evil imagination use your own mind to declare that every evil imagination projected from my father's house projected from my mother's side projected from my inner side projected from the kingdom of Satan, projected from the realm of the water into the heavenly to walk against me that as i am walking those people will walk against me i pull you down in the name of jesus you will not manifest i pull you down begin to say that you take authority over that evil protection hey yeah yeah is someone on the Understanding what I am saying, you are taking authority of your week. You are commanding your week. You want your week to go well. You want your week to go in peace. You want to get whatever God wants you to get this week, and that is why you will pray this prayer with all seriousness. What that whatever thing that my my household have projected, evil projection, evil my week to manifest against me. I invoke the blood of Jesus Christ against you. I take authority over you, you will never manifest against me. You will never manifest against me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Someone praying that prayer for your own deliverance in the name of Jesus. For the Bible said that no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment, God will condemn. God has condemned in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. No good thing with the Lord we told from you this week. In the mighty name of Jesus, for the Lord Almighty is your shepherd, you shall not want. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, your cup will run over this week. Only goodness and mercy you shall see. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And this time, begin to welcome the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit to take charge of my week. Holy Spirit, take charge of my week. Holy Spirit, take charge of my week. Take charge of my day. Holy Spirit, I dedicate myself afresh to you. Take charge of my activities. Take charge of my decision. Take charge of my work. Take charge of everything that I am going to go through this week. Holy Ghost, take charge. May the Lord Almighty give his angels charge over you to guide you and protect you in all your ways. According to the book of Psalm 91 verses 11. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I welcome you, Holy Spirit, to take control of today's service. Let your name be glorified. I 
welcome you, Holy Spirit of God. Take charge and take control. I empty myself for you, Jesus, for you to come in. Take over, Jesus Christ. Let any man, let no man see me, but let them see you all, and let them hear your voice, oh God. Come to the end of your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, for you have not called the seed of Jacob to, to seek you in vain. Your word said you have sent your word of God to lighten up the whole house of Israel. Father, may you send your word of God to lighten up, oh God, the whole house of God from Israel. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I bind every demon, every demon, principalities of the heavens that is waiting, that is waiting to capture any testimonies today. I bind them, I take authority over them in the name of Jesus Christ. Every power of darkness that will stand against the testimonies of God, that will stand against the testimonies of the people of God today, the Lord Almighty rebuke you from this service in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord Almighty rebuke you. The name of the Lord Almighty rebuke you, the principalities and powers, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord Almighty, for in Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. Amen. Glory unto Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory unto Jesus. Please, if you have not shared the program, please share the program. God bless you as you do that. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Our fasting is coming up this Friday. This coming Friday, our fasting is coming up. And um, people in United States, we start our fasting uh, okay, the United States, we also have different times. But if you know that you live in different, we know we have different people living in different countries. The easiest way for you to get the time that will be alive on, on, on Friday, please try and Google. Try and Google Nigeria 6 a.m. Nigerian time, 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Nigerian time. 6 p.m. Nigerian time, not 6 a.m. Please pay attention. The time is 6 p.m. That means in the evening, 6 in the evening. We are meeting 6 in the evening on Friday. Nigerian time, 6 in the evening. Nigerian time. So try and Google. Nigeria 6 in the evening, 6 p.m. in the evening to your own time, and you will get your time. For me here in Washington State, my time is like 10 a.m. in the morning. So that all of us, we do it the same day because sometimes when we start our fasting, so people are already in the next day and when we are still doing the we, we in United States, we are still in on Sunday. So everybody is starting at the same time and we are ending the same day. So that is why Google Nigeria 6 in the evening. So whatever location, wherever you are living at, that is the correct time for you to come live, please. There is, a, there is time for everything. There is time to eat. There is time to refrain from food. There is time to laugh. There is time to be serious. Sometimes it's not all the time that we eat and eat and eat. If God has called us to fast, three days is not too strong. Fast according to your strength. Yeah? If you are taking medication, fast according to your strength. What, whatever time you want to break, break. But our own here, we are adults. So we do our fasting 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. 6 to 6. That is what we do. But if you know that you are sick, if you know that you are pregnant, if you know that your kind of work is a work that requires re energy, and there are people that still go to work with the fasting, but our normal fasting time is 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. But if you know that you cannot do it, fast according to your time. But it is three days. The first day starts on Friday. Second day starts on Saturday. And we end it on Sunday. So may God help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Today's teaching is going to be... It's going to be a preparation concerning that fasting, what God expects us to do. I remember the year 2022 where our fasting is so serious. We do back-to-back -back fasting. We don't stop. All throughout that year, before I got into school, and uh, school is kind of taking my time, taking my time, but we are coming back to fasting again. We are coming back to fasting again in all God's strong ministry, and the Lord Almighty will grant us the grace to start doing the fasting. So now, our fasting, please take these three days fasting seriously. And it is 
Also, the Easter period. Three days will not kill you. You have been eating for 27 days. Three days. Three days. 33 days out of 30 days will not do you any harm. So it is a time for us to sacrifice our food to God. Let the food be an offering. Fasting is like you are bringing an offering to God. God, take this food and give me something. That is how your fasting is like a currency that you are giving to God and God giving you something back. That is fasting, making our life to fast forward. Fasting makes our life to fast forward. So whatever thing that is holding you back before, fasting makes our life to fast forward forward that is the meaning of fasting so if you know that you are tired with where the where you are now you need this fasting so that you can be fast forward in the mighty name of jesus christ like i said today teaching is all about preparation concerning the fasting that is coming up today's topic is be specific in your prayers i'm going to teach some techniques by the power of the holy ghost through the wisdom of god I'm going to teach some techniques how our prayers can be answered and how we can prepare ourselves to come to the fasting. So please pay attention. If you want to take note on what you need to do to bring to the fasting, we, I, I, my joy is to see you get what you are looking for, not to just come here and waste your credit or waste your data. I want your prayers to be answered. So some techniques. For God to answer prayers, that is what I'm going to teach today. You can put down some things down so that you can arrange your prayers when coming. Don't just come to the fasting and say amen. Prepare. What do you want God to do? You are coming to God. You don't just come and be looking at God's face. And I'll be looking at God's face and looking at God's mouth. What do you want me to do? That's what God will ask you. So if you are not prepared, don't just come here and just come and do amen here. Write out what you want. Attach your scriptures to it. And this, the, the, the principles of prayer answered. That is what I'm going to teach today. As you pay attention and as you obey, may the Lord Almighty see you through. I believe in pre I believe in formula. Tell me what I need to do, and if I do it, I get my result. That is what I want. I don't I don't like like people just helping me to do everything, help you to do everything. No, tell me how to catch the fish, and I will go and catch the fish. That is my principle. That is what I really want in my life. So as I teach this topic, there are a lot of people that get their testimony through teaching. There are people that get their testimony through prayers. So we have two different kinds of people in every service. People take teaching and they walk towards the teaching and they get their breakthrough. There are people who will just wait for amen, amen, and they will still get their breakthrough. But if you get the two together, that will be favored. That will be the best one. So as we go into the teaching, please pay attention. May you be the hearer and the doer of God's word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Before a lawyer we pray, present a case so our topic is be specific in your prayer be specific in your prayer that is our topic of uh, uh, today's service may the lord help us in jesus name before a lawyer will present a case in the court he or she will perform different research the lawyer will do some research in order to bring information pertaining that case to the court. And if not, otherwise the persecutor or the defense lawyer may object and say, Objection, my lord, this is not right. That is how similar things happen in the things of God. Whatever thing you picture on earth, everything happens in the kingdom of God. Except bad things. Bad things does not happen in the kingdom of God. God only issued issue commandment for demons to go and carry out but all good things they come they came from the kingdom of god so any system that you see that is good today everything originated from the kingdom of god that is why i tell you that if you can pay attention and follow principles of life you will get good results you will be getting your things like this instead of you waiting for people to tell to to, to help you do things if you can look okay I go to school. If I go to school, when I get to 300 level, I will go to my area of specialization. The same thing, it happens. It, the same thing, it happened in the things of God. Things of God, there are specialization where God have this destined you to be. You came to this life, everything is just good and good. But by the time you hit 40 years, that by the time you hit 40 years, 40 years, you will get the message that you have lived the the, the the half of your life recently i saw i saw white hair on my in my front hair some how many seed of white hair in my in my front hair 
when i saw it i know that i'm past 40. i know i'm past 40. i know i'm in my early 40s but i've passed 40. when i saw the white hair in my hair i got the message i know that old age is telling me that prepare if not you will suffer at old age that is how it is the sign of white hair that you see in your head there are no there are, there are men here at 40 when the clock 40 some people 30 something they see white beard on their face it is a message telling you that you don't have time anymore your time is going you may think that you are still strong your time is going so white hair is like a message prepare prepare for your old age if not you will suffer that is what or prepare start doing what god has sent you to do if not you will answer to that assignment god has sent you to do so at 40 is when your life actually starts 40 years above is when your life actually starts so if you are still in your 20 something you are still in your 30 something you look as if the whole world is like you are still everywhere but if we get to a point you must go to your area of specialization it is a must that you must go to your area of specialization or you go to center to get things from center if not god will put you on hold when you reach 40 years you must go to your area of specialization. If not, God will put you on hold or you go to Satan and be getting things quickly that will lead you to destruction. That is how it is. Every Most people in the Old Testament started their life at 30. But according to our age now, according to our generation, life starts at 40. So, so that is how it is like you are you, you you get to a point where you go to your area of specialization so any good thing that you see on earth is also happening in the kingdom of god so what are we what am i trying to say is that if a lawyer did if a lawyer do not prepare himself or herself very well when he goes to that court his opponent will object and say that objection my lord this is not right i know what this session session this session that said in the book of law so that is how it is in the taste of god when you are bringing your presentation god is the chief judge god is the righteous judge god is sitting down and when you are bringing your petition you don't run around and be talking here talking here talking here you you tell God the way it is, bring relevant information from the word of God, bring relevant evidence from the word of God and pertaining God's nature. So when you can bring something pertaining God's nature or bring something pertaining what it is written, that prayer is bound to, is bound, is bound to be answered. God has many names in scripture. God has many names in scripture. So you can address God according to a particular petition that you are you are asking God for. Jehovah Jireh, God, you are my provider. Jehovah, you don't you you are you you want something from God. You want God to provide something for you, and you are calling God Jehovah Rapha, which is God, Jehovah our healer. That that does not match. So you address God according to your situation. What is your situation? What are you looking for? What is the name of God concerning that thing? God, you are my great provider. If you do not provide this thing, God, nobody can give it to me. You are Jehovah Jireh. That means you are addressing God according to scripture. You are also addressing God according to his personality in that area of your request. God will be moved. If I am moving right now, you call me Yakare. That is not my name. But because I am wearing Yakare, it is over. I will know that you are saying something concerning me. I have another name of Fure. If you call me of Fure, I will definitely come back and say that that is me. You call me Augusta, I will definitely come back and say that is me. So when, when you call someone, when you address God according to his personality, it makes God to answer quickly. Like, who is calling me? Who is calling me in this area? God, I am the one calling you because I want you to provide. If you call God Jehovah Jireh, he will turn. Jehovah Jireh, who is calling me Jehovah Jireh? Yes, it is me, Lord, because I need provision in this area of my life. You have just got, you, you just captured the attention of God in that area. You are sick. And you want to address God, that God, I am very healed. Jehovah Rapha, my healer. Jehovah Rapha, my healer. Where is the Lord God, Jehovah Rapha? 
You start calling God in your name. He will turn and say that that is my name. Who is calling me? My name at this time. You say, God, I am your daughter. I am your son. I am here because I need your healing. Your word said that you are Jehovah Rapha. You are addressing God according to his personality. He drew God's attention quickly. Instead of you running about and saying that my father, my father. Da, 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 da. Yes, God is our father, but address God according to his personality. I am Mrs. Lawrence. If you address me, Mrs. Lawrence, you are giving me respect that I am a married woman. The same thing applies to God. God is the general name. But when you address God according to his personalities, according to his title, he makes him to feel important. He makes him to be happy that someone respects me. That is it. You cannot just barge into the king's palace and call all you king. All you, uh, 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 Austin. And you're, you, you're supposed to put the title King Austin. When you call the king Austin and remove the title of a king, they can discipline you for that. So we human beings, we do not pay attention to this thing. We address God as if God is our mate. We call God at any time the way we want. We call Jesus at any time, your majesty, Jesus, you are my savior, send me from this thing. I am a part of God, oh God. The Bible said that everyone that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Savior, Jesus' name is savior. You are dressed in savior. I am in this trouble. Come and send me, oh Lord. He knows that you are calling him savior because why? You need him to save you from the trouble that you just got yourself into. He makes him to act fast. So, principles of prayers. A lot of Christians are suffering today for lack of knowledge, for lack of understanding. And the more we understand the principles of prayer, the more we will get quick results. Yeah? So, like I said, that there are a lot of people that I, I, it is just this time. Sometimes I wet. Sometimes I cry. Because why? Before, you know, God's strong ministry with pile up testimonies. People here, all people here, they know that sometimes before our next fasting we start, we cannot even count testimonies. Sometimes we put three testimonies, four testimonies a day. Why? Because I have time. I have time. We do fasting. We pray. We teach. But now, because I am in school, my time is kind of limited. And that is why our fasting is kind of taking long time and taking this time. Before, all God's strong ministry is always on fasting prayer fasting teaching and people some people are getting prayer getting blessed through the teaching some people are getting blessed through testimony through through the prayers so so we are coming back to that era again of how me myself managing my time to see us getting breakthrough you are not paying me you are not paying me for anything but i want your breakthroughs i want your destiny to open up so pay attention to the teaching so when we address God according to his personalities, when we address God according to his person, he make, it, it makes him to act fast. And when you now come into God, God, another one is God. I don't have peace in my life. His name is Jehovah Shammah, yeah? Or Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Shalom is peace. God, you are my peace. Ever since I came to this life, there is no peace in my life. Jesus, Jehovah Shalom, you are my peace. Give me peace. You see how I address God according to scripture? I address God according to his personality and put my request to attach to it. Simple, easy, cheesy. Yeah? So, you can say, like the example that I just gave you right now, they are good example to address God according to his personality depending on what you are looking for. Depending on what you are looking for. You may not ask, you may not ask me, how do I how do I get the names of God? You the good boy is there. Tell me the names of God. There are numerous no names of God, many names of God. Take them, take them to yourself, write them in a paper and say that okay, this is what God, these are the names of God. Good boy is there. In, in, in three minutes, you will get all the names of God there. Just copy, paste it and put it somewhere. That is it. Whenever you look for something, go and look at the list. Okay. What is the personality of God concerning this area? You carry that very name. That is the name you start shouting. That is the name you start shouting. If you are, if you hold a killer baby and be beating me today, oh, I want to beat you. 
what will you do? You'll be shouting. Oh, God, start leave me alone. That is, you know, when you are shouting and shouting that same day, God, no, you must answer me. Jehovah Shammah, you must answer me. Jehovah Shammah, you must give me peace. You are just in your room, chanting that name, chanting that name. God will say that. Let me give this one. Let this one leave me alone. It's like a child that is crying after after something. A child is crying for something and the mother, he's not he or she's not giving the parents peace. That's a, just, that is just how it is. Yeah. So yeah, Deuteronomy 7 15 says, So when you address God according to his name, according to his personality, what will happen? Your request is there. What did the Bible say concerning that request? My healing. Yes, Lord. Jehovah Rapha, God the healer. Your word said, according to the book of Deuteronomy 7, verses 5, verses 15, you said, oh Lord, if I serve you, if I serve you, you will take away sickness from me. That is it. Right there. So you are dressing God by his personality, bringing your request and telling God what it is written. For God, the Bible said that just as the rain comes from heaven and, and, and accomplish that which it is sent for, they said and never return back to heaven. The same way, the same way it is. The word of the Lord will never go back to him in voyage. Whatever God sent his word, it goes forth to accomplish that which God has sent it for. So when you address God by his personality, his name, Jehovah Rapha, my healer, your word said, your word, Jehovah Rapha, my healer, I know that I am sick. I need your healing because you are Jehovah Rapha. For your word said it is written. According to the book of Deuteronomy 7 verses 15, you said if I serve you, my Lord, my God, you will take away sickness away from me. Take away this sickness away from me, Jehovah Rapha. That is the perfect prayer right there. So our fasting is coming up. And the Lord is saying that we should address this issue in the body of Christ. Write down your prayer request. List every prayer request. List what? A scripture attaching to that prayer request. So that when we come here and we give, when we give you time to pray that prayer request, as you are calling the name of God, you are putting your request down, you are saying it is written. Combine together. Prayer settled. That is how God gets in. That is how we get things done. I've told you people several times. I say when you follow the formula of God, God is not difficult. It is us that don't want to follow formula. We want quick, quick things. If you settle down, even I myself that I'm doing fasting, yeah, I go down. I I, I carry a scripture. When I read the book, of, when I read the book, I follow everything that is in that very Bible, that very book that I am reading. I can take the book of Joel. The book of Joel is only three chapters, and that three chapters talks about fasting. Everything that is going on in that book of Joel, it may be going on in my life. And what did they do? What did they do to get out of that situation? I also do the same thing that they did. And then I say, God, you are the one that answered these people in the time of Joel, in the book of Joel. Answer my own too. That means, and the Bible said that God is no respecter of any man. What God do for what God is capable to do it again. So that means you are duplicating the testimonies of those people into your own life. There's a young, there is a man that shared testimony concerning that testimony is, is 2000 something. 2000 something testimony. He was te testifying about his document, his visa that they keep rejecting and rejecting what did the man do to get it all this is why they are sharing testimony is for you to go go and look for the testimonies of these people put yourself into their testimony put yourself into their shoe and do what they do what they did and get your result that is how the bible is many times i go to the old testament and go old testament a lot because there are a lot of stories in the old testament that you can put yourself in that old testament book and get your result I use the Old Testament a lot. Anytime I want to go into fasting, I search for people that have done fasting in the Old Testament. What was what what, what were they going through? And if I say that what they are going through align with what I'm going through, what did they do to get out of the situation? I also pay attention to that thing. I also do it, and I'm watching God. Okay, God, let's see if you are biased. If you are biased, if it, if it is that people are just talking that you are God and God. No, you did it in the time of Joel. You did it in the time of Zachariah. You did it in the time of Elijah. You did it in the time of Gideon. And I'm also doing the same thing that they did that, that you get the result. Do my own for me. 
That's how people get their results. You don't just sit down and be looking for people to help you. Africa, Africa, wake up from religion. Wake up from religion. I am telling you this thing. I have been in religion for so long waiting for pastor pray for me. It did not work for me. Wake up from religion. Have you ever seen most ministry here in the United States here? They have it online and they are waiting. The, the people are so, there are so many waiting for people to help them to pray. Have you ever seen foreign country having a big platform waiting for people to come and pray for them? Africa, wake up from religion. Wake up, Africa, from religion. Do it yourself. For the Lord Almighty died for everyone. The Lord Almighty died for everyone. Wake up from religion, Africa. We are being destroyed because of religion. So, the pastor is coming right now. Write down your prayer request. Write down your prayer request. Attach a scripture to it. What are you going through? I am being delayed. Go to Google. What did the scripture say about delay? Then we bring a lot of scripture for you. Pick one or pick two. Attach it to that very prayer point. Go to your next prayer point too. What did the Bible? What did the Bible say concerning rejection? Who in the Bible experienced pain and sorrow and rejection? Jabez experienced pain. Jabez experienced rejections a lot. You take that Jabez scripture, put it there. God, you are the one that did Jabez. Oh, do it for me. Who and who else experienced barrenness in the Bible? There are a lot of people. Anna, Sarah, Rachel, the mother of Samson, uh, uh, Moana. Uh, parents of Sansi, pick up the scripture, attach it to the barrenness or inability to conceive. Look for another one, financial breakthrough. What must I do for my money, for money to come into my hand? Okay, what did the Bible say concerning financial breakthrough? Give and it shall be given unto you. Okay, I'm, I'm going to look for a banker. I'm going to look for someone. Someone came to me this recent week. No, let me just reserve that story. Yeah, so give and it shall be given unto me okay that is it right there what did the bible say concerning academic success the bible said that i am the head i am not i am the head and not the tail i am above and not beneath and in christ lies all treasures of wisdom that is it right there take your prayer point look for it in the script in the in the google attach it to that thing and that is how you win your battle until you get your results you don't stop you don't you don't stop if it takes you, if it takes you to repeat that prayer all over and all over again until God answer, keep doing it until God answer. Keep doing it. The Bible said that in the in the time of the Israelites, they were in the wilderness for years. The Bible said that God fed them with the same food. God fed them with the same manner. They keep eating the same manner and manner and manner and they got tired and they said that I am we are tired. And when they said that they are tired, that is when God was angry with them and God started sending snakes to bite them. God started sending snakes to bite them. So never be tired of your prayer point. If it takes you to be praying that prayer until God answer. Start praying that prayer until God answer. It will become flesh. The Bible said that the word become flesh. The word your word then don't just read the scripture as if the scripture is just printed there try read the scripture and understand the bible said that the word the, the, the bible said in the beginning was the word what is the word 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 of mouth in the beginning it was only word word of mouth there's nothing in the word it was only word of mouth yeah and after declaring the word let there be light and the word the word of god become flesh so as you are declaring this is a word that you are creating until you see it come to flesh manifestation physically you don't stop You don't tell yourself that because you slept yesterday, you will not sleep today. We have three things that are essential for all human beings. We have the sleeping time. We have, we have the eating time. Yeah? We also have, um, there are three things. Sleep, food, and one other thing 
in again and 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 I, I'll try and remember it. Three essential things that are essential for all human beings to live. If these three things is not in place, human beings will not be complete. The same thing applies with prayer. If prayer is not added to your day, you are not complete. You are prone to destruction. But your prayer must not be useless. If you are spending small minutes with God, let it be authentic. So, for the upcoming fasting, List your prayer request. Look for a scripture. Attach it to that thing. You are a student. I am above and not beneath. In Christ lies all treasures of wisdom. I am above. I am not beneath. I can. I can. I cannot. I, I am the head and not the tail. There is scripture right there. You are waiting for a spouse, waiting for a husband, or waiting for a wife. Two, in, Father, your word said that two is better than one. That if they work together, they will have good reward. And if one is called, the other one will make the other one will make the one that is called one. That is the scripture for those that are looking for a spouse, that are looking for a life partner. God, I cannot be single. I cannot be single because your word said that two is better than one. That is the scripture right there. So you take your prayer request, look for scriptures attached to it what about barrenness i cannot be barren because your word said oh god you will take away barrenness you will take away barrenness away from me you said i will not have miscarriage and the number of my years i will fulfill you said i should go into the world and be fruitful you don't stop quoting those scriptures see normally yeah every scripture is supposed to have seven scriptures Every prayer request is supposed to have seven scriptures. When you have one prayer request and you have seven scriptures to pack it up, it is completion. If it is completion, God cannot deny it. God cannot deny it. One prayer request, seven scriptures means completion. That prayer is complete. Stop looking for people. Pray for me. Pray for me does not work anything. If I pray for you today, will you come back again tomorrow and say, pray for me? You are disturbing me, sir. Teach me how to catch the fish and let me catch it. So, so the Bible said, the, so our prayer needs to be intentional and practical with God. Practice the practical things with God. Practical. Practical things we go. Intentional, like let your whole mind be in the prayer. Yeah? So it is not something that we just throw. Prayer is not something that we just throw all over the place and you just go, you don't pray and be saying amen and you go home. You will still go home the same way you came. Yeah? Prayers. Prayer must be intentional. You must have intention to pray that prayer and you must be practical. You are practicalizing something to show that you are demonstrating your, what you are saying. You are demonstrating what it is written and let God do his own. God, yeah? So when you present your list of petitions, God will know the thought and the purpose behind them and he will respond. So when you have your prayers and your petition and the scriptures backing it and addressing God according to that area that you are, you, you want your prayer, you want your prayer answer, God himself will respond, will respond quickly. And this is the confidence that we have in God, that if we ask anything, according to the book of First John 5, 14 to 15, the Bible said that if we ask anything according to his will, and what is the will of God? The word of God is God's will. So God do not want you to be sick. And that is why you are telling God that God, you said if I serve you, you will take away sickness away from me. God do not want you to be barren. That is why he said that go and be fruitful. So if you, that is the will of God. So it, the, the will of God is also for you to prosper in the work of your hand. He does not want your business to, 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 to. He said whatever that you set the work of your hand into, you shall prosper, yeah? That is what the word of the Lord said. That is a scripture attached to business. So that is the will of God. So when you come to God,
If you pray according to his will, and if you know that you have prayed according to his will, that means you will get what you have asked for. That is what 1 John 5, 14 to 15 is talking about. When you pray, we need to describe exactly what we want. It's another point. This is another point now. A lot of people, they will just say that I need a husband. There are many husbands. My husband is a husband. There are married people here. They are husbands. Uh, even the singles, they are somebody's husband. Yeah? You don't just throw the prayer, God, I need a husband this year. I need a wife this year. I am myself, I am a wife or someone. Another guy is a wife. You don't just throw the prayer like that, like everywhere. When you order your stuff, you order it exactly how you want it. So this is another point again. When you pray, you need to describe exactly what you want. Let me give you a testimony. I had a testimony of a lady who got married to the exact kind of man that he want, that she ever dreamed of by using her imagination and thoughts to create the man. Remember that there is one. This is another point. We have finished the first point. This is the second point now of how our prayer should be arranged. And the leading of the Holy Spirit, if you are praying in tongues, that is another different case. If you are praying in tongues, that is another different case. But if you are praying in your language, in your English, arrange your God is a God out of order. You cannot come to a sound room and be looking all tattered and looking all crazy. The exam, the examiner will drive you out of the exam room. That is how it is to go. Be organized. All right? Remove this organizing from your head. Be organized. Organize your things properly and you will get your answer well, well and clean. So I heard of a lady, a, a lady who got married to a man that she ever dreamed of. Why? Because she, 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 she was saying that she described the man in his in her heart. And when she was in early 28, she keeps saying that this is the kind of man that I want. A man that is shabby, a man that is like a chocolate from so so so, so part of the country. And she described the man the way she wanted down to how the man is inside. Like she wants the man to have hair on on on, on his chest. She, the height, the profession, she was creating the man in with her imagination that, oh, this is the kind of man. I just want some, a man that is a twin, a man that is tall, a man that is shabby with chocolate color, a man that has this kind of profession, and a, a man that is a Christian. And if you are a Muslim, you can choose a man that is a Muslim, yeah? But uh, this girl, the lady was saying that I want a man that is a Christian, that we, that two of us, we do the work of God together, carry the work of God to the next level. She was describing the body size and everything that she wanted in a man. At early 30s, when the man came, she was not confused. She just knew that that is what she wanted. The man came as a twin. The twin that the, the, that she was she she was imagining that this is all. I, I wish I can just marry twins so I can bond twins. I wish I can just marry a man that has hair in her chest, a shabby man. She was imagining these things, bringing these things into creating her world with her mind, with her thoughts, with her imagination. And when thirty came, when her early thirties came, the man came immediately. And when she saw the person, she knew without anyone prophesying or without her telling pastor pastor can you check if this man is my husband or this man it saves her from confusion she just knew that this is the kind of person that i was picturing years ago this is the kind of man that i just want in my life the same area that i really wanted the man the same village the same country that i wanted the man to come from that is where the man came from and the man is also a twin and the man have hair in his chest she just knew exactly what she wanted so me, young people that are here, oh yeah, you are looking for something. It is not only young people. Describe your word with your imagination. Create your word in your heart. God did not just come at one day and say that. Uh, let me just create the word. I said that let there be word. The Bible said that He came. He had me. He, he, he told them, he said, let us create man in our own image. That means God has first of all conceived the thing in his heart and he has talked about it with his, his with, the, with the beings that are in heaven with him. And he now come out and say that, I want to create someone like me. He first of all thought about it before creating the world. So everything that you are looking for must come from your imagination first, your thoughts first. I want to have document of two years. Go two years document. Create everything inside of your heart. Create the picture. Create
create the imagination. Create instead of you singing nonsense song and uh, be dancing nonsense thing and when you like them, instead of you creating your word, you are not creating what Satan is giving to you because why? You were watching movie for five hours. You were listening to music for 15 hours. You were singing useless movies, useless songs. So when you like that, you cannot create anything with your imagination because you belong to the word. The word like this will start playing in your mind. You will never create anything. I'm not saying that you should not listen to music, yeah? I'm not saying that you should not listen to your worldly things that you... But if you really want to create a peaceful world, a beautiful world, you should be imagining good things, good things, that will create good destiny, good things for you. Through your imagination, you shouldn't be sleeping and be singing inside of your dream. You shouldn't be dreaming. You shouldn't be sleeping or lying down and be thinking no sense because of the things that you watch, the things that you listen to so that is why we guide our heart the bible said guide your heart guide your mind with all diligence like i said i've said it several times that i logged out of facebook it's going to about four months or five months now i am not in facebook the app of this page is different from ordinary facebook i only come into this very app of facebook and uh, app of um, the page of facebook and get at my real facebook i am not there it is sometimes my husband will share the program from here to that place. So if you are sending me a message, then you will never get me because I am not dead. Because why? I, I am tired of the world playing inside person's mind. I want to create my world. I want to create my world. I won't be able to lie down and picture that there are thousands of people getting well. There are thousands of people getting healed from August Strong Ministry. There are people getting their business well. There are people getting their documents well. There are people reading the scripture. There are people being delivered. There are people seeing signs and wonders in August Strong Ministry. I won't be able to picture that thing and let that thing not come to manifestation. So anything that will bring distraction, that is why I, I stopped the former page, the, the, the WhatsApp group that I have before because the trouble was too much and all that I said no instead of me thinking about positive things on how people will get well how people it is carrying people problem 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 everywhere this group need to go and let me focus let me focus so 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 that is how it is you want something that is your request number one break the thing into manifestation through your thought you create the picture create how you want it document of five years that is what i want in this country how will it come just imagine and i just go to the court and the lawyer instead of the judge to give me two years the judge will just give me five years i wish ah you just keep imagining good thing about that request good thing creating that picture in that your mind bringing it as a man thinking that man will not become that thing so you see the power of how that lady got her husband through what imagination creating the man in his in her heart picturing the kind of person picturing the profession picturing exactly how she wanted the thing and when the thing came she did not hesitate she did not doubt to say that let me go and check with my pastor she just knew that that is what she has been expecting for years so the number two to, to, to round up the number two is that b describe what you want exactly how you want it how do you want it i want a car the car should be red don't just throw to god and say that god i need a car what kind of car you god i need a house what kind of house yeah so you need to describe exactly what you want and that girl that lady that i told you about is still in marriage for they, they, they are married now for 13 years. The marriage is still counting to tell you that it is God ordained marriage. 13 years of marriage and the marriage is still counting. That is God ordained marriage. Yeah, that is the lady's testimony. So let me tell you that that the kingdom of God is populated with different departments, different departments, different departments because. We human beings, we have different needs. So when you different needs, different departments in the kingdom of God is populated. So you don't just you don't just you don't just come and uh, the and Jesus Christ is the head of the department. Jesus is the only way to the department of the things that is that are in the kingdom of God. 
So that is why we are accepting Jesus. It's the currency that we use in getting whatever thing that we want. So the kingdom of God is populated with different departments because we have different people with different needs. So and they, with God himself have different beings called the angels that are in that are placed in those departments. So when you now request anything with that proper description, you will not get what you are looking for. You will wait forever. Because God has different people. God has different people with different needs. So you yourself, for you to be a first class student, you have to be ready. You have to be ready for you to get what you are looking for quick. You have to be organized. When all that are not organized, you have to be organized by yourself because you will know, you know that they have different people in this world that are asking of God every day. So God will attend to those that are organized first. So you that is not organized, you will stay there forever without getting what you are looking for. So when we come to God, we need to arrange our things because we know that in the kingdom of God is of different departments and different things are in charge of those different departments with God himself, with Jesus himself, the head of that department. So when you are coming to describe, when you are coming to ask God for something, describe what you want. I want a girl short, short like Ofure, yeah? A shabby like Ofure, know how to pray like Ofure. You start picturing, but don't picture me in your mind, but you are picturing someone describing something that you want. I need a car, a red car, a this that you describe the model exactly how you want it. Let me give you a picture of what I'm talking about. Many Christians today are waiting in vain for their prayer to be answered. And they're, they're, like, like, like I said, there's power in your imagination, creating your imagination and thought. That it is good for you to create that thing in your mind. And when the thing comes, you will not have that. You will know that it is something that you have been praying for, for years. Yeah? So, uh, one, a lady, uh, an old lady, told me years ago, we get to that description. Let me let me tell you this one. Uh, uh, today, we are not praying. We are preparing people ahead of the first thing that is coming. If you are taking notes, so please write out your prayer request. God is going to answer us mightily on this first thing that is coming. It is going to be it according to your preparation and according to your faith and belief. But I'm going to give time and make declaration today. So pay attention to today's teaching. There was a lady that said something, an older lady, I call her older lady because she's older than me with about 20 something years. That, that lady told me some one secret years ago. And I used that thing a lot. She said that her pastor told her that she can that a silent prayer works a lot. Silent prayer. Nobody's hearing what you are saying, but you are just lying down. You're you are lying down, you are just your mouth is communicating. You are picturing, you are imaginating something and you are saying it with your mouth, communicating with God. That kind of prayer is very, 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 very powerful. And when she told me that thing, I said, hmm. And an example came into my mind. The Bible said, according to the book of Matthew 6, verses 5, no one that Jesus Christ said that when you pray, do not pray like the hypocrites. He said they love to stand in the synagogue to pray so loud, stand in the street corners, and so that people will see them that they are praying. He said, truly, I tell you that you have received your reward. So, so there is power in silent prayer, imagination prayer, picturing that thing in your mind and communicating to God that God, this is how I want my thing. You know, nobody is seeing you saying anything, but you are just in your your bed nobody may hear you but you are just in your bed you are picturing the thing you are thinking about that thing you are using your mouth to communicate with god that god this is how i want my word this is how i want something this is how i want it you are communicating that kind of prayer is a very dangerous one very powerful very powerful because you are present there are some prayer that we are praying that is so loud that that is so loud that your mind is not even there. Your mind is somewhere in the market where your mind is speaking the word, but your mind is not there. But silent prayer, it makes you to be quiet, makes you to concentrate. You are picturing the thing, you are communicating with God. That is silent prayer. Silent prayer is very powerful. The Bible said, according to the book of 1 Samuel 1, 9 to 28, the Bible said that Anna, Anna used that pattern. If you remember, go and read the story of Anna from the book of 1 Samuel 1, 9 to 28. The Bible said that Anna was crying. Anna was in deep anguish, crying bitterly. She prayed to the Lord and she made a vow. 
because she made a request and she was specific. Please listen to this part. She was so specific in her prayer. She said, oh God, I need a soul. You see how she described the gender. I need a soul. She did not say that, God, give me a child. A child, any child is a child. But she said, I need a son, meaning God, give me a boy child. That is number one. She described the gender. She then number two, she go and read the Bible of uh, the book of First Samuel one to nine and listen to Anna's prayer. You will see that everything that I'm, I'm teaching here is inside of the prayer. Number one, she said, "Oh God, I need a son." She did not say that I need a child. If not, God will say that there are many child. Is he a boy or a girl? What is the gender? But she specifically said that I need a boy. Not just a boy. I need a man of God that will be a prophet and a priest unto you. That means she also described the profession of that boy. That I, I don't just need any other boy, any other son that will come. But I need a boy that will be a pastor, that will be a man of God for you. She described the profession of that man, of the boy that is a part of her. That means profession is already sought. She did not stop there. Then she not said that, God, not just the profession, I also want the boy's hair to be long. That means I don't want any resolve to touch the hair of the boy. So she described the status, the status of that child, that God, I need a boy, and the boy should be a man of God, a priest and a prophet unto you. And thirdly, I want the boy's hair to be long. I don't want any result to resolved to touch the boy's head. She described the status. She described what she wants exactly how she wanted. And the Bible said that 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 when when <clears throat> when Al Eli the priest at that time saw her, her mouth was only moving. So what I am teaching right now, everything I'm teaching is inside of this Anna's prayer. Anna was not speaking loud. Her mouth was only was only moving, but nobody was hearing what she was saying. Yeah, she was picturing the thing in her mind. She was communicating with God, describing what she wants, that I need a boy. That is the kind of person that I want. Not just a boy, the profession of the boy should be a man of God. Not just the profession, but the stature of the boy should be that the boy will have a long hair, that the hair, they will never cut the hair. Everything was going on inside of her mind, silent prayer, the imagination, creating the boy from her mind. And the Bible said that the priest, Eli said, Anna, why is it that you are drunk this morning? This early morning you are already drunk. And I, because the priest was not hearing what Anna was saying, but Anna was communicating from inside imagination and thought and creating her word the bible now said that uh, anna replied the replied the priest and said that i am not drunk oh, i am communicating with god and the priest now said that be it go god let the god of israel grant your request let the god of israel grant your request anna, anna did not hear what Anna was praying about. Anna, Eli, I am, Anna did not go to Ella and say that this is, help me to pray. I need this thing. Help me to pray, woman of God. Help me to pray, man of God. Anna did not tell the priest, but Anna was communicating with God, describing what she wants from her heart. Inside of her heart, she was not saying it loud. But the priest now said that anything that you are asking of God, may God grant your request. And she went home, all happy. The Bible said that when God actually opened the womb of Anna, that child came exactly to how she wanted the thing. She wanted the man of God, that child came. The, she wanted a male child, the boy came. She wanted the child to be a man of God. Samuel, become the, Samuel became one of the greatest prophets in the Old Testament because when her mother created her inside before the thing came out. And nobody touched the hair of Samuel. Because why? The mother created the word of Samuel before Samuel came to manifestation. The word became flesh. Yeah? So, so that is Anna's description. So, so when you are praying for something, when you are seeking God, if you look at Anna's prayer, she seek God. She put God in her request. So if you are asking God of something, if you do not add God, to your request, don't please go back and reset your prayers. If you do not add God to your request, go back and 
reset your prayers. Maybe you have been waiting for so long and you have not put God into consideration. After describing this and that and that and that, without, if you look at Anna's prayer, she thought about God. God, I need a son. She did not think about herself. She said, God, I need a son. A son that will serve you and will be a prophet. She made something, created something that will please God's heart. So our prayer is supposed to please God. It's supposed to be according to the will and the purpose of God. So if you are getting, say you are praying for documents, and all you think is that God, give me documents so that I can work in this Europe, so that I can work in this Italy, so that I can work in this United States. You have not put God in your own consideration. You have not put God. That what do you want to use that green card for? Yeah, please go back. Go back and reshuffle. Go back and reshape all that thing. If what you are looking for is not for the purpose of God as well, or not for the purpose to glorify the name of God to help generations, please go back and, re and reshape it. It will make your prayer, it will make your prayer to be answered quickly. It will make your prayer to be answered quickly. It will make your prayers to be answered quickly. The Bible said that seek first God's kingdom and his righteousness. And every other thing will be added unto us. So when you describe your thing, call God by his name, address God according to his personality, bring scriptures that quote what you are looking for, and you not describe exactly what you are looking for. Also add God and thank God, if I get this thing, this is what I want to use it to do. For your own kingdom or for this or for that, you must add God to your plan. That is the will and the purpose of God. That is how Anna just still Anna nailed it on the just nailed it according to what God is looking for, and God gave it to her exactly. So Anna's prayer is like Anna's prayer. So there are prayers that we pray so loud. Those prayers that we pray so loud are prayers of spiritual warfare. We use it to destroy the kingdom of Satan by making bold declaration. Declaring the word of God so loud so that Satan will hear that one. That is to destroy the kingdom of Satan. But silent prayer of communicating with God, you are talking to God. If you are talking to me now, you are shouting. You are shouting and shouting on me. You are disrespecting me. There's no need to hear your prayer. But silent prayer, most of the time, it, 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 it gave God respect. It made God to communicate back to you and you are communicating with God. So that is silent prayer. Why aggressive prayer and loud prayer is to destroy the kingdom of Satan. Satan, hear me and hear me clear. You speak that one loud. So, Anna prayer is like someone that is ordering something online. You are ordering something. You are ordering something from Amazon. And you are saying that, Amazon, I need you to bring it back. Or I need you to bring a Bible. I need you to bring a book. And you not just put your pay card there. Amazon will never deliver that thing because we have a lot of bag in Amazon. We have a lot of things, books, Bible in the in online. Uh, what kind of Bible do you want? What Bible fashion do you want? You cannot just put in any order. So when you order anything online without proper description or without proper made or the, the, the brand, that online uh, website will never deliver your request. That is how it is with God. If you don't, if you don't give accordingly how you want the thing, how you want it, the color, the description of that thing, you may end up waiting forever. You will never get it. It makes people to waste their time, waste years. Maybe something that you're supposed to get since last year, you are still waiting. And before you will not get it, God will just say that this one is a low dope. This one is, is, is very dumb. And let me just pity for her. So instead of you getting the thing in within three, with three months window, you are waiting for three, five, nine years. God will not say that if I wait for this one, this one will never get sense. Let me just give this one something. That is why people waste a lot of time before getting one testimony. If not, it's not supposed to be so. Three months. Every three months. Every three months, you are supposed to be seeing something good in your life. Every three months, you are supposed to be seeing something good in your life. So, these are some of the principles of uh, uh, something. So, Anna prayer is like that. God, give me visa. God, if you give me visa, I want so, 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 so country, but give me the country that you want. But if you give me visa and I'm able to enter that country, this is what I will do. I will, I will serve you, I will do this. Then, so I, join God with your request. You are the one that knows what I cannot tell you what you can talk to please God, to add God to your plan. God must be added to your plan. That is what makes a perfect prayer. 
God, give me a good job. If you give me a job, I will start helping ministry. I will start paying my time. Or I will start helping people, children from the streets and all that. These things make God to act fast because it is the will of God for us to help the poor. So, God, give me a husband. Because if you give me a husband, me and the husband can work together and do ministry or do your work or... Uh, send people from the streets or send children that are from the street or drug addicts we can do something to save drug addicts from the street or do something to help humanity this is the kind of husband that i want you to give me or this is the kind of wife i want you to give me a wife that we have passion for your work a wife that we do your job a wife that will be strong and walk not just relying on me so that we can carry your kingdom purpose together and we will last forever that is the will of God. God do not want the marriage to break. I want to marry a man or a marry a woman that will last forever till you call us home to do your work, to save people from drug addicts, save children from the streets, save this, that, that. That is the will of God, yeah? You don't just live a life like only me, me, me. Sometimes I have drive a lot of people from, from me because when I see you that your life is all about me, 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 me. That kind of thing disgusts me a lot. It is not only about you. If Jesus is all about himself, Jesus will not die for the world. But the Bible said that Jesus so much loved the world that he came to die for the world. He came to die for the world. So when you are a person that is all about you, 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 my children, my husband, my wife, my me, my children, my wife, you will not live any good life for. Even if you are living a good life now, that is not the kind of life you are supposed to live. You are supposed to live above where you are now. It's not a good life. A life of all about me, 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 without putting people in your agenda. It is not a life. If it is a life, they would have given birth to only you. Or you, you, are, you would have been the only person on this earth. That is not a life. Yeah? So we need to put God in our agenda. So when you ask God, some of us, our prayer request is like, we ask God for something, God give me a visa. God, give me a visa. I want to go to United States. And you know, you know, you know, you know, tell God that one and you go. That kind of prayer is like prayer continue. God, we put it, prayer continue. You want a visa, God. If I don't go to this, grant me my visa. That kind of prayer is what prayer continue. That's why you see that they deny people like four to three times until they get sense and make restitution with God. They deny them visa. They deny them visa all the time. They deny them. God just put in their request. Prayer continues. Like someone that is watching movie, at the end of the movie, they, they write movie continue. Because why? You did not complete that prayer. You did not complete that application. Have you seen anyone writing an application halfway and just submit it? They will just dump the application there. That is how some people's prayer are. God will just dump it. Prayer continue until you come back and complete this application. Your prayers will not be answered. That is why you see that a lot of people are delayed denied of their prayer request for years and even if they get it it is god just give me them grace that this person have waited let me just give this person i will i will, we will soon end now a young man from this ministry that boy and so much that my spirit so much by that boy so much yeah that boy uh was in nigeria before and when that boy that boy have been applying for visa for good three years to canada he has spent a lot of money spent a lot of money I never prayed for that boy. I never prayed for that boy because if you are suffering for many, many years, that is something is wrong with your whole life. Go and make go and make restitution with God. God, God is not a wicked God. I have thanked God in several ways, and I know that the God, the God is not a problem. You are the problem. So that guy has been suffering for three years, applying for visa. They've been eating his money, eating his money, eating his money, and they never give him any visa until he now met all God's strong ministries. That is why I said that there are people that pay attention to teaching and they get the teaching and they get their breakthrough. There are people that just follow prayer and they still get their testimonies. But this one, he listened to either one of the teaching or testimonies that I made, and he now met, he now told God, I will, I will reserve what he said. He told God something and said, God, if you do this thing, this, that, 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 this is what I will do. This is what I will use this thing for. And this is, he went back to reset his prayer and he went back to put in that application. Boom. That very time, they did not deny that visa anymore. They gave it to him quickly. And one thing about God, after God gave it to him, he did not fail to do what God, what he told God that he was going to do. He did it exactly what he said. 
And God did not stop there with him. Immediately he got to Canada. He did not take him three months. God gave him working authorization. Why there are people that have traveled for 100 years. There are people that have traveled for 12 years, 15 years, 10 years. There are people that have traveled for more than five years. They never got what this boy got. But the boy went back after the teaching. He went to re to reshape to restart his prayer again and said that something is wrong with my life. Next one, I'm going to take this woman by his teaching or testimony. I'm going to do what she was saying. And she did it. And he did it. Immediately, God gave him that visa to Canada. All that three months, somebody, people that are here, they get working authorization sometimes after six months, sometimes after a year, two years, they are still waiting for working authorization. This one got his working authorization within three months, 90 days of stepping leg, stepping leg. So when you do something, when you put God in your plan, God does not just stop doing that prayer request. He do more. Because why? You added God to your plan. Any prayer request that you do not include God, it will take time, sir. It will take time. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. And when the boy arrived, Canada, I told him, I said, look, this is what you need to be doing. This is what you need to be doing for your life to move faster. This is what you need to be doing because that is what I did. My life, I don't know how people will stay three years, five years, ten years and not getting something. Go and check your prayer. Go and check your prayers again and reshuffle yourself. Reshuffle yourself. Because I myself... That this boy is like someone that still came to this country, that came to the country that have no body, no family, nobody, nobody fight for him. There's nobody that will say that my sister is the one that put in the paper. My sister is the one that gave me document or I married and gave me. No, God proved himself and said that I will give you your document. The government will give you your document. Nobody fight for this boy. He has no helper there. The same way I came to this United States without having any helper. 90 days, God showed up. That is when I know that if you are not getting something faster, it is your problem. It is your problem. It is not God. It is your problem. It is not God. Go and reset that prayer. Go and reshuffle. Go and rethink. Go and restructure that prayer again. Something is missing from that request. Yeah? So... Examples, examples of prayers that make God to move fast. To conclude this whole teaching, I'm going to refresh your brain again because our pattern is coming on Friday. As you are writing your prayer request, include all these points that I am telling you. Examples of examples of prayers that move God fast. I'm going to give them to you now so that we can go. These are things that I've said before, but I am rounding up the program to refresh your memory so that you can get yourself prepared on Friday as we come into the fasting because I myself, I'm getting myself prepared. All issues is over. Issues that are disturbing you, they are over. As you take all these necessary steps, they are over. So, one, you need God to give you a job or to give you a visa. Or to give you a document because you said that God, this is your word. God, this is your word. Concerning this thing, if I serve you, you will give me this, you will bless my bread, you will bless my water. Yeah, so you are calling God by his name, addressing him according to his personality. What what can you call God? In, in what, what kind of name? Jehovah Shammah, God give me peace. Jehovah Jarrah, God give me, you are the great provider. Address God according to what you are looking for. Yeah? God, and you give God a reason. Give God a good reason because when you bring foolish reason, I swear that prayer will not be answered. If you may, if you give reasons that, that does not make sense to God, God, give me a red car. You describe the thing very well. God, I need a car. I need a red Toyota car. I need a car that I can be using to go to the market. If you do not, uh, as, if you do not put God and humanity into that plan, that plan can never work. God, I need a car so that I can also use this car to help anyone that need my help in carrying them to a hospital or to anywhere, any place. If they come to me, I will not deny them. Oh God, I need a car that I can be using to carry people to church. It is a good reason. Good reason. Not God, give me a car that we use to flex. 
and we used to go to work and we used to go all everything is all about you all about you that kind of request will be hard so when you pray those kind of prayer you make your description i need a red car a toyota car an suv an suv car that will help me to carry people a big car that will help me to carry people at the back that has space and uh, the year of the car 2024 you describe what you want exactly and give reason why do you want that thing it, is it for the glory of god or for you just to show that you have a car or that your life has updated your reason must be a good one before god and as you are expecting that car you may wait that okay if i do god may bring a business God may bring a business that will make you to have a good gain that can make you to buy that car. Or God can even surprise you by letting someone to sell that car to you. And when you see that car, you will just know that this is what I was praying for. This is, I, I was, I want SUV. And somebody just came and gave me SUV Toyota for blue color because God is the one that not changed the color for you and gave you the blue instead of red car. So, when you describe your stuff, let God be the one that will change the description for you, but describe exactly what you want. So God may bring business that will make you to get that car or, or take you to a place where you will meet that man or meet, meet that woman. Yeah. So let God be the one that will change the plan for you and say that this is the one that is better for you. So this is the one that we give to you. But state your reasons. State a good reason that makes sense. I need a husband that I can, me and, me and him can serve you together and save drug addicts from the street and do your mission work and save children that are dying of poverty or preach your word of God. That is why I need a man. Give a good reason. I need a child, a child that you can be, you can use to serve to serve in your kingdom purpose, a child that can help generation, a child that will be a blessing to many generations. Don't think about yourself first. Think about God. Think about people. Let you be the last. You should be the last person to gain what God wants you to gain. Remember, when God asked Solomon, Solomon said that, God, I need wisdom. I need knowledge. I need understanding so that I can use it to rule your people. He did not say that give me wisdom. Give me knowledge and understanding so that I can use it. And the remaining king of the world we know. And God himself now added riches to, to Solomon's request. He said because you did not ask for wisdom that you will use to kill your enemies. God now added more. To, 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 to Solomon's request. Because why? Solomon did not think about himself. Solomon was the last option. He was thinking about people. He was thinking about God. So, that is a perfect description. I used the card color for you. Just like an example. An example. That is just an example. So, create your own. You are the one that knows the reason why you want that thing. But don't create a foolish a reason that does not make sense to God. The prayer will be on hold and it will never, it will never be answered. Yeah? It may take years that God will just pity for you and say that, let me give it to this one. If not, this one will never get sense to reset the prayer. But even if God reset it, years of your life have wasted. Instead of you getting the, three, the thing in three months, you are getting it in three years. Is, is that year is not a wasted years? That year is a wasted year, sir. So another example is that thank God first. We are coming to the end of the day. Thing. You thank God first. Like I said, that we are not praying today. I'm only teaching so you can prepare yourself because I know God is ready. God is ready for us in these just three days. God is ready for us. Depend on those that are prepared and those that will do the fasting. It will be it according to your faith. So, so, I've said how the description is, yeah? God provides... Uh, another example is, according to... You, you, start, you start with thanksgiving to God. Psalm 145 is a good psalm to praise God. Psalm 145. Praise God with Bible scripture. Like me, I don't know how to sing a lot. I'm, I, I deal with prayer, 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 prayer. So 
when it comes to worship and all that, I use most times psalms and I use old songs that I know in Nigeria when I was in Nigeria to do worship. Also, if you are a type like me that does not know how to worship God very well, but it is not only about singing and singing. Go and look for psalms, good psalms, Psalm 100, Psalm 150, Psalm 147, Psalm 145. All those scriptures are good worship scripture you must not like sing with your mouth psalm 150 psalm 100 psalm 147 psalm 145 these are good scripture that we praise the name of the lord you praise him sing his praise with this scripture and thank god of his powerful distance then number two you now describe you now state what i just told you thank god that this is what i want i have come please show me mercy this is what i want I need so, 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 thing and that. Describe the thing that you want and tell God that remember what you said in your word. That's number three, right? Number one, worship by using psalms or singing song if you know how to sing very well. Number two, state what you want to God, that God, I need this. I need this. And give God reason why you need that very thing that is number three you give god why you need that very thing number four you now remind god of his word remember what you said oh god it is written it is written according to your word oh god that two is better than one because if they have because they will have good return for their labor that is ecclesiastes 4 verses 9 for those that are looking for husband those that are looking for husband I, i'm going to use a husband's honor because looking for spouse is a very common one among the body of christ so i'm going to use husband or wife you're looking for spouse you're looking for husband ecclesiastes 4 9 said two is better than one because they have good return for their labor if one fall the other can reach out to help that means if one fall the other one can help the other one to get up that is the reason why i need a husband oh god or oh, that is the reason why i need a wife i cannot just be single because if i fall nobody will raise me up that is why I need the life partner. But someone who fall alone is in real trouble. Ecclesiastes 4.9. That is one scripture. You still tell God again that God, it is not good. Why? This is a good reason why you should give me a, 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 a husband or a wife that is strong, that is intelligent. I did not go to school. Give me a person that go to school so that if they send us letter or they send us email, this person can read the email and two of us will not be dumb in the house. Give God good reason. Good reason. A man. Describe the man. I need a man from my own town because I do not speak English very well. Me and him can be speaking the same language together. That is why I, that is why I need a man from my village or from my country yeah i need a man that is tall because i am short i need a man that is tall taller than me so that if we are trying to pick something from somewhere two of us will not be short i'll be looking for how to take the thing so i need a tall man i need a tall man i need a gentleman because my myself my own temper we don't need hot people you keep good God, I don't want trouble in my house. So I grew up in a very horrible environment. I don't want a man that grew up in a very horrible environment. Two of us will be fighting and stabbing each other. You give God one good reason. Describe the kind of spouse that you want. And after that, you now say that God, I know. That's another scripture. I'm giving you another second scripture now. That God, I know that you are my great provider. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Jireh. No one can give me this kind of husband or this kind of wife. Or this kind of child you are jehovah jara god the provider you are now addressing god according to his personality right jehovah jara that is his personality and that is why you are asking provide this man for me provide this woman for me because you are jehovah what jara according to according to his word in uh in psalm 84 verse 1 god your word said that no good thing will you withhold from me you are always giving people good things you will not withhold good husband. You will not withhold good wife from me. Give me this according to your word, Psalm 84, verses 1. No good thing will God withhold from those that walk blamelessly. That is another scripture, yeah? Then you will not go to Psalm 23 again and say, God, you are my shepherd. I shall not want, I shall not want husband. I'm not supposed to be dragging and looking for husband, looking for wife, or looking for job. You are my shepherd, Jehovah Jireh. I shall not want, and no good thing will you withhold from them that love you. Psalm 23. That is right there. 
The few people notice now I have quoted fourth scripture in one prayer request. Fourth scripture. First one is the praise. Psalm 145. Second one, Ecclesiastes 4, verses 9. Third one, Psalm 84, verses 11. Fourth one, Psalm 23. And I'm still going, yeah? For just one prayer request. Then you will not say that, God, I trust in you. I trust in you this day because I know since I was born. And now I am getting older. I have never seen you forsaking the righteous. Not the righteous beg for bread. The righteous never suffer to get anything, God. Because you are Jehovah Jireh. You are addressing God with his one name. One name, see, so I'm using one name. I have not... I have not diverted to wonder because why? I want God to provide me a husband. I want God to provide me a child. I want God to provide me a job. I want God to provide me a wife. I am using first scripture. The fifth scripture now is Psalm 37 verses 25. Many words. Since I was old, now I'm getting old. Since I, I was born, now I'm getting old. I have never seen you, oh Lord, Jehovah Jireh, forsaking the righteous. You always answer our prayer. That is Psalm 37. Verses 25. Yeah. Then you will now move forward again. The fifth scripture, you know, the sixth scripture is like, God, I will wait for you. I will wait for you, oh Lord. I will wait expectantly for you because I know Jesus, you will answer my prayer. That is Psalm 5, verses 3. Psalm 5, verses 3, or Psalm 41 to 3. You see, example. So one request now, one request. Description, good reasons with seven scriptures. That is what I just gave you now. Perfect example for a prayer. So when you have more requests, seven scriptures, start with thanksgiving. Give your reason, description, seven scriptures to back them up. Even if you don't have seven scriptures, get the scriptures that you know that you can get your hand on. But seven scriptures is the perfect one for God to know that you know what you are doing. Yeah, so that is what I just said. That to conclude it, John 5 6 said, told us that there was a man that was lying down. Jesus Christ went there and said, that, Do you want to be healed? The man was giving stories and giving stories, and Jesus just cut him short and said, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. So, God do not want long, long story, cut it short. This is what I want. This is what I want. This is what I want. Stop giving long, long story. He already know what you want, but he wants you to describe what you actually want to know that you know what you are doing. So instead of you giving long, long story like the man in John 5 verse 6, he was lying down sick for years. The Bible said yes. He was been, he has been dead for years until Jesus said that if I leave this one here, this one will suffer till he's dead. He will suffer till he's dead. Let me just show grace. Yes. Something that he would have been healed for years. But he was still lying there waiting and see like some Christians that have been praying and praying and praying. Prayer is never answered. Because why? You did not pray. You did not arrange your prayer very well. This man, Jesus just went there and asked, do you want to be well? He was still giving long, 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 long stories. And Jesus just caught him short, short and said, pick up your mat and walk. And the man quickly picked up his mat and walk. Yeah? So at the last example is that. Is Mark 10. 51 to 52. There was a blind man that was blind. Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Short question. And the man gave Jesus short answer. I want to see Rabbi. I want to see Rabbi. And Jesus told him what? Receive your sight. And that man carried his that man, after the man's eyes opened, the man carried his bag and followed Jesus. Because you see why he got his healing? His mind had been imagining, I will, if I can see, I will follow Jesus all the rest of my life. He was including Jesus in his mind. That is why Jesus was able to pay attention to that man. Jesus does know what is in our heart. If your heart, if your heart desire is for wicked things, he will never grant it. Jesus does not the heart desire of that man. So when that man's eyes opened, the man carried his back and he followed Jesus. He was serving Jesus and his ministry. If, if that man would have been a bad man, Jesus will walk past that man. But he asked him, what do you want me to do for you? And the man said that I want to receive my sight right back. And immediately Jesus said to him that you are healed. Receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. He carried his bag and followed Jesus Christ. That means he has Jesus in his mind that if Jesus can heal me, I will, I will serve Jesus all the days of my life. 
He followed Jesus and his ministry. So if Jesus see in your heart that your intention, your reasons are wicked, he will never grant that thing. So we need to reshape ourselves. And that is why, that is the end of our teaching today. If you started this teaching from a halfway, please go back. Because all these teachings are meant for our fasting that is coming up. Remember that your prayer must end with Jesus' name. You start your prayer in the name of Jesus Christ and you end your prayer with the name of Jesus Christ because the name of Jesus is the currency to get anything from God. The name of Jesus is the money. Just as you use money to buy things, the name of Jesus is the currency that you use to buy anything from God. Without the name Jesus, you will never get anything. Else. If you like, package your English. If you like, package all the scripture. If you like, package your reason and put the name of God and everything. If the name of Jesus as a Christian, if the name of Jesus is not included in starting your prayers and finishing your prayer, forget it. You will never get it. Jesus' name is the currency to get all things from the hands of God as a Christian. May God help us in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. So, now, we have concluded the teaching today. We have how many more days? Four more days or five more days for the fasting to start. Go and prepare yourself according to this teaching that I have taught so that you can get your prayer answer. There's going to be a lot of testimonies on this upcoming fasting. If you pay attention to this teaching and do what God has sent me to come and tell you, remember that you can start using those methods from today. Don't stop praying that prayer until you see your victory. Don't stop praying the prayer that you wrote down and you arranged with scripture until you see the manifestations, until you see them become flesh. Don't stop. That problem that you are going through is over in the name of Jesus Christ. According to John 19, 30, whatever thing that you are going through, it is over in the mighty name of Jesus. As you are coming to God, on this fasting in truth and in spirit and in preparation that problem is over in the mighty name of jesus that very issue is over in the mighty name of jesus christ i will give you five minutes i will give you five minutes right now before we close five minutes begin to pour out your hearts to god what do you want god to do for you Five minutes, five minutes, personal supplication. You are the one that know what you desire. You are the one that know what you desire. Now begin to open your mouth and begin to pray. What do you want God to do for you? Just as Jesus asked the blind man, what do you want me to do for you? The name of Jesus is the currency to buy that thing. Now begin to use the name of Jesus Christ and tell Jesus that no good thing will you withhold from me. No good thing will you withhold from me. Oh, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus said, ask anything. If you ask anything in his name, he will do it. That's in our supplication. Five minutes. Five minutes. Begin to ask your expectation right now. Ask your expectation right now. Just as Anna prayed, begin to pray your own prayer. I like practical as you practicalize the prayer of Anna, as you picture that very thing in your heart, as you create that very thing in your heart. In the next four minutes, one minute is gone. Begin to pray your expectation. What do you want God to do for you? As you are praying your expectation, I see God delivering that thing into your hand. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, is someone pouring out their hearts to God this very week. God, this is what I need. This very week, oh God, this is what I want. I got, I want to use it for your purpose because I want to use it to help you, man because i want to do this and do that god this is why i need it and th this is exactly the description of what i need this is the description of what i need oh lord this is what i need how i want it the time that i want it oh god is someone praying that prayer you have four minutes to go four minutes to go on this prayer point as you are praying that prayer begin begin to express begin to express your mind to god how you feel how long you have been waiting for this prayer why you need this prayer to be answered 
for his purpose, for his will. Oh Lord, answer my prayer right now. Begin to pray that prayer. You have two more minutes to go. 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 Begin to pour out your heart to God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, as you are praying, I see God delivering to your hand that very thing that you are looking for in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. As you are praying, I see God delivering that very thing into your hand this very week. You shall laugh at Lord this very week in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Mighty God, answer these prayers of your people. You have not called the seed of Jacob to seek you in vain. Two more minutes to go, two more minutes to go. As you are praying that prayer, two more minutes to go, two more minutes to go. Jesus said, ask anything in his name he will do it please if you have not shared please share the program god bless you as you do that ask 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 and it shall be given unto you one more minute to go one more minute to go one minute to go one minute to go in the name of jesus christ be specific with your request be specific and give reason why you want that very thing be specific be practical with god be sincere with god <clears throat> mean what you are saying in the mighty name of jesus christ may the lord almighty grant you that heart desire this very week may the lord almighty open the gates of heaven unto you in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth one more minute one minute to go one minute to go is someone praying that prayer is someone asking god is someone asking god and telling god that god you said if i ask anything in your name oh lord jesus christ you will do it begin to ask jesus in his name ask jesus in his name as jesus in his name as jesus in his name at this time begin to appreciate god for answers of prayer thank god for answers of prayer thank god for answers of prayers in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth we thank you lord in the name of jesus hallelujah in the name of jesus christ i pray for you the same way in the order of Ella. The same way Eli prayed and told Anna to go in peace. Ah, may the Lord God of Israel grant your request in the name of Jesus. That very request that you just prayed now, go in peace. May the Lord God of Israel grant that prayer request that you just asked in the name of Jesus Christ. For the Lord my God will not withhold any good thing from you. The Lord my God is a son and a shield unto you. The Lord my God is a son and a shield unto you. The Lord protect you all throughout this week in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord protect you all this very week in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every good thing that belongs to you, the Lord Almighty will bring them to pass this very week, I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord Almighty be your shepherd this very week. You shall not want. In the name of Jesus, you will lie down in green pasture. You will lie down in green pasture. In the name of Jesus, peace shall be beside you. Peace shall be in your house. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Lord Almighty resurrect you from dead works. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, may you walk in the path of righteousness. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil in the name of Jesus, because the rod of the Lord and the stone of the Lord will comfort you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord Almighty has prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemies. The Lord Almighty has anointed your head with oil and your cup run it over. Your cup has run over. Your cup has run it over means and um, breakthroughs breakthroughs is your portion this week in the name of jesus christ and surely only god and goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you shall continue to walk according to the will and purpose of god in the name of jesus you shall dwell in the place of god forever in the mighty name of jesus christ i declare again that in the mighty name of jesus christ no good thing with the Lord we told from you this week. No good thing with the Lord we told from you this week. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the Lord Almighty is your son. The Lord Almighty is your sheep. 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May the Lord Almighty grant you the grace to serve him. May the Lord Almighty protect you in the name of Jesus. May the Lord Almighty shine his face upon you, upon the work of your hands, upon that very request that you are asking in the name of Jesus Christ. The young lions do lack but you that trust in the Lord, you will not lack any good thing. In the mighty name of Jesus, as you wait expectantly for God this very week, in the name of Jesus, your expectations will not be cut short. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father Jehovah Jireh, provide for your people. Those that are asking one thing or the other, Jehovah Jireh, our oh Lord, provide for your people. Jehovah Shalom, those that lack peace, may you give them peace. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Jehovah Rapha, the one that heals. Anyone that is sick, Jehovah Rapha, may you heal them because you are the great healer. You said if we serve you, you will take away sickness. Take away sickness. Take away the disease of the Egyptians from your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, none shall be barren in our midst. That is what your word said take away barrenness oh god from anyone called barren barrenness in the work of their hand barrenness in their womb barrenness oh god in the in whatever thing they do father take them away oh lord in the name of jesus christ rebrand their life repair their life oh lord thank you mighty god because i know you hear me jehovah el shaddai lord almighty i give you praise be thou exalted jesus thank you king of kings savior may you save your people from destruction save them oh god from evil use your holy spirit to instruct them the way they should go just as your word said according to the book of psalm 91 verses 11 father may you give your angels charge over them to guide and protect them in all their ways in the mighty name of Jesus, that we will meet again, oh God, on Friday to begin our fasting in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everyone that is what everyone that is coming for this fasting, any hunger tank, whatever thing that will deceive you not to do this fasting, the Lord Almighty banish that demon from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I lock every hunger tank that tank of hunger that is making you hungry all the time making you not to do fasting i lock that hunger tank and i drive away that demon from you in the name of jesus you will do the fasting and you will get your glory you will do the fasting in the name of jesus christ of nazareth to the glory of god and your expectation shall be delivered unto you the lord almighty shakes whatever thing that will disturb your spirit of destruction the lord almighty shakes them from you in the name of jesus christ as you engage in this one thing you will not quarrel with anyone any strategy satanic system that satan have put in places to distract you to make you quarrel to make you quarrel with people to distract you from this fasting the lord almighty rebuke that demon from you in the name of jesus christ may the lord almighty keep you in perfect peace may the lord almighty's face shine upon you and the work of your hands and your family in the mighty name of jesus christ i shall definitely by the power of the holy ghost see you on friday in jesus wonderful name i pray receive the grace to fast and your life will fast forward in jesus wonderful name i pray amen begin to celebrate god and give god all the glory celebrate jesus christ and please if you have not shared the program please share the program to help someone and like the program so that facebook will recommend the program to those that are not getting notification why i tell you to like the program there are people that are not getting notification if you like the program it makes facebook to pop it out quickly for those that are not getting notification that is why i said please like the program and share the program to reach other people to learn about the principles of prayer principles of prayer as you do that god bless you and i will see you on friday by god's grace 6 p.m nigeria time 6 in the evening nigerian time on friday so google that time to your time and i shall see you to the glory of god in jesus wonderful name we pray amen surely god goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the presence of the lord forever amen hallelujah glory shalom baba father in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth i pray for everyone that is watching me right now oh 
oh God of my salvation, I present everyone that is here. I present them before your court of heaven, oh God. I plead, oh God, and we come under the umbrella of the blood of Jesus Christ. I plead that your court be seated this day, oh God, and let the book of the destinies of these ones be opened, oh God, and attend to their cases in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, Lord God, you are the only one that showeth mercy. Let your mercy be found in today's service, in today's prayers, oh God. Let everyone that is watching me right now, oh God, may they find mercy, may they find grace through the precious blood of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As the Holy Spirit have empowered us, oh God, to present ourselves before your court this day. Father, show mercy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth.